Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Nuria Moreira, and I will expose dissecting the Neolithic dwelling through the application of geostatistic techniques. Uh, the, uh, my communication is going to be organized. First, I'm going to refer to the theoretical framework, the framework that I'm developing, and I've been developing. And after that, I will expose a uh, case study, and I will refer to uh, all data, method, results, and discussion and conclusion of the results obtained. Well, first, the purpose of my communication uh, is to explain uh, the methodology used for inferring from the distribution of the archaeological material to, uh, to the dispersal of social activities. In this regard, it is important to distinguish between dispersion and distribution. While, first, while the first refers to the, adapt, the act of dispersing, the second defines the arrangement that results from the process of dispersing. Then, we could say that human activity implies a dispersal of some material items, and its result is an ordinated dispersion of discarded objects in the space. It is ordinated since human activity is, rare, is rarely random performed in the space. Therefore, when we are archaeologically observing this, is because once happened this. As known, the archaeological space uh, is an incomplete and distorted ref reflection of a former social space that results from the combination of human behaviors and forces of nature. Hence, the archaeological space, as a past social space, mirrors the causal relationships between agents, the activities developed by these agents, and the different products that result from the performance of these activities. Consequently, these causal relationships are those that we are attempting to unravel from the archaeological record. To do so, we formulate and apply a method of deductive, of deductive reason. This has considered, first, the mode of production that characterizes the society under study and its corollaries, Secondly, the household as the, as the analysis unit. Uh, in this regard, we understood household as uh, census, will, and reg. And lastly, the possible activities areas that can be found within a household, uh, such as production areas, consumption areas, discarding areas, and residential activities areas. Seems that doesn't want to follow. Okay, <laughs> one minute. Uh, I've got some problem, uh, so let's close. Okay. okay. Well, I've got previously uh, some trouble with that. Not in my computer, but in another comp uh, in a Microsoft op uh, computer with that slide. So I will just go through without uh, exposing the slide if it's if it's working. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Cannot sit here. Well, in the previous slide, uh, I'm sorry that you cannot see it, but. Um, it was uh, represented a conceptual model that, uh, as an example, uh, for uh, that explains how do we have uh, uh, understood these causal relationships, uh, and this conceptual model, uh, well, uh, is uh, considering uh, for each activity for performed from the society understudy the sequence of production processes of every activity the means required for developing uh, each productive process, the products resulting from this productive process, and finally, uh, but most importantly, uh, the archaeological evidences we can recover from each one of these activities as, and its possibilities to infer. Uh, dipping in the case of study, uh, this case of study was developed uh, uh, was carried out in La Draga. La Draga is an early, early Neolithic pile dwelling settlement located at the northeast of the Iberian Peninsula, on the eastern shore of, of the eastern shore of Lake Bagnolas. 
The site provides evidences uh, of one of the earliest farming societies in open air settlements in the area. The site dates to the ending of the 6th millennium BC. At La Draga, two different but continuous uh, phases of early Neolithic occupation have been found, uh, have been documented. Here we'll focus only on the latest phase of occupation. This phase is characterized by the collapse of wooden structures. More precisely, my study, uh, the study I'm going to expose was performed for an area of 56 square meters. All the archaeological materials retrieved from this sector had been already studied when performing the special analysis. Therefore, the information needed to conceptualize the different activities and to, to infer versus the different functional spaces was available. Regarding the data used, uh, data was divided according to the nature of the practices on which, uh, on which they were involved. Hence, we differentiate between the, uh, the archaeological remains that were implicated in consumption, and consumption and production practices. It is important to stress that data use was processed to measure the frequencies that we're having uh, for each constituted sampling unit. These sampling units were regular special areas of one square meter, and the geographic reference that was taken for performing the special analysis was uh, the centroid of each of these sampling units. In addition, data from the wooden structures defined was also used. Uh, however, of all shown in the plan, uh, in the slide, uh, we just focus on uh, assemblage B. In the assemblage B consists of three large horizontal boards that were fitting together, making, the, making a rectangle that was getting into the northern profile. For this assemblage, uh, as it was found leaked in situ while digging, we had the certainty that, it, that this was showing a single moment of use. Uh, specifically, for the case of Savi, this structure was taken as a bounding for observing which were the archaeological remains that were recovered within, which were the, uh, that were recovered at the area nearby, and which were recovered distant. The relevance of observing uh, <coughs> which were the archaeological remains that were recovered within and the area nearby at the more distant locations, relies on the assumption taken that the prob probability that, uh, that an action occurred in a specific place in the past is greater where a large amount of material uh, consequences were found in the present. This assumption follows the Tobler law, uh, which expresses that everything is related to everything, but nearer things are more related to distant things. The geostatistical techniques applied. Several tests were performed, though it was by means of predicting and correlating that we achieved the most meaningful results in terms of knowledge of, of knowledge reach. In this regard, through them, we were able to answer the uh, to answer to the questions where and why there. Both procedures will be briefly explained and exemplified in the following slides. The predictive models were generated through the realization of special interpolations. Through these, we were, uh, we were able to observe where was the most probable place where data of a particular cate category was discarded in preference. It is relevant to highlight uh, that for this study, special interpolations were not produced to estimate the value of a variable an, at an unsampled location, but for, but for rectifying the bias produced by the sampling units employed. <laughs> Regarding the predictive models obtained, two dissimilar patterns, two dissimilar patterns of distribution were obtained for the categories analyzed uh, that are representing the consumption practices. As shown, the distribution of, uh, the distribution of pattern of the final remains uh, above in the slide uh, is, a com is, a commu is cumulative and mainly concentrated in a specific central area. This central area, uh, moreover, coincides with the wooden structure taken as a reference. On the other hand, uh, the distribution of Mytilus galloprovincialis remains is shown widely dispersed through the entire surface. Moreover, no significant concentration comparable to the observed for final remains is, is found. 
In reference to the productive practices, multimodal patterns of distributions are shown for most of the predictive models obtained. From the observed cumulative distribution patterns derives the special coincidence among, artef among artifacts of different categories in the northern central area of the analyzed surface. We are here and over there. At the same time, these, uh, the, these are located within the limits of the wooden structure considered as observed with the faunal remains. In addition to that, another special coincidence is shown between the main concentrations of meals and, uh, and also the main, concentration, and the main concentration of pottery remains. However, the, this last distribution uh, is more dispersed uh, in, in comparison to the other cases presented. The entirety of these predictive models were cross-checked through uh, the value of the prediction error of the special interpolation with the residuals and also through the performance of local indices of a special association. A correlation. A special correlation was performed to displace common, uh, the common spatial behavior through all the analyzed categories in space. For, uh, to do so, a two-step procedure was carried out. First, a detrended correspondence analysis was performed to compare the similarities among sampling units based on the number of frequencies observed. Through these, we, uh, we observed two, uh, two opposed special associations. One that relates here to the faunal, uh, to the faunal, to faunal remains, and, uh, and another one that relates with uh, the opposite. It is remarkable that the results obtained through the DCA did not differ from the obtained from, uh, the, from the correlation of coefficients. Correlation test uh, performed through sperm, uh, correlation threads to experiments row was performed previously for comparing the correlation between the different archaeological categories by reasons of its occurrence. After mapping, after Lee mapping techniques were applied to the DCA row scores using the special coordinates. Through these, a special interpolation that considered a predictive model for each axis was obtained. The predictive model generated showed the location of particular cells with statistically significant discriminant values. In this regard, in reddish and yellowish, it is observed the distribution of, met of Metilis gallobrevigensialis and its uh, associated other categories. And in bluish, it is observed, it is represented the distribution of faunal remains and its especially associated categories. So jointly, the predictive model obtained suggested a special organization in four different, in four different stated zones. Methylus, fauna, methylus, and we could say fauna again, and all the associated different artifacts. So from, the affirmation, from all the affirmation, we could argue first that the visualized space that the visualized dispersal of artifacts in the space is the result of an intentional act of dispersing. Hence, it is a consequence of human behavior. This, is, this a statement is supported by the cumulative patterns shown and by the rejection of null hypotheses of a random distribution of the archaeological remains in the, in the space. Second, we can argue that we've got evidences of a planet positioning of activities areas in the space, since Tobler law has effectively been proved. Near artifacts are indeed more related than distant artifacts. In this regard, the theoretical models of causal relationships have aided to define the probable activity areas and to possibly characterize the typology of a structure analyzed. More specifically, about the planet positioning of activity areas in the space, we hypothesize regarding a differential distribution of labor in the space, as clearly differentiate differenti dispersal are shown among artifacts, which are evidencing, evidencing the location of activities of different nature in futures. To exemplify it, I just wanted to highlight again the different and opposed uh, 
um, distribution of faunal remains and Mytilus galloprovincialis remains, on which I must say that Mytilus galloprovincialis remains were not only consumed, but also we've got evidences of um, being used uh, to, as, a, as a mean, well, as, yeah, as a mean of for developing uh, practices related with the processing f uh, fibers. So in this regard, we can consider that they were not, uh, and we also know that they were not uh, meaningful uh, in terms of um, consuming, uh, consuming speaking. And moreover, I must say that they, we've got evidences uh, that the main concentration of meals that coincide with the main concentration of water remains, uh, we've got also evidences at this same zone, your marking blue, that uh, there were a, a big concentration of different cereal grains. Uh, this said, uh, this, uh, the meals uh, find it here, we know uh, for um, uh, functional analysis that were performed for to, green, to grinding. And moreover, we've got uh, also an, uh, an article on which uh, uh, the distribution of pollen uh, cerealia uh, was performed, also with the same methodology, and uh, coincides with the with the uh, play, the location of the of the meals, the pottery, and also the cereal grains. So for all that, we are uh, arguing or hypothesizing the place where produ the production of uh, cereal, well, the processing of cereal was performed. Ah, oh, sorry. This is the article, I'm sorry. Just came late. Thank you very much for your attention. And